we are one step away from the grand final of the Copa Libertadores. The semifinals kicked off with dominance from the Brazilian teams. It feels like unless a miracle occurs for the home teams this week, the trophy is going back to the land of Fuchibol. And here in Rentox Bowl, we're gonna predict the second leg in the semifinals of the Copa Libertadores 2024. River Plate traveled away to Belo Horizonte to play against Atletico Mineiro or so I was told because honestly I only saw one team out on the pitch. Similar to what he did in the Super Clásico a few weeks ago, Marcelo Gallardo decided to set up with a back five trying to cover spaces and not allow Mineiro any chances. As the main objective for the Argentines was not to lose this game by a big margin and then win the tie at home at the Monumental. But El Gallo had other ideas. Gabriel Milito also deployed a formation with three centre-backs, but with Scarpa and Arana acting basically as wingers for a front three of Paulinho, Huki and Daverson, who after his two goals against Fluminense in the quarter-finals got to start in this game, and it proved to be the right decision. Only four minutes in, Mineiro had a corner, Scarpa put in a cross that was headed by Junior Alonso, and the ball landed at the feet of Daverson, who scored, but he was offside. Although prior to that, the ball hit the hand of Gonzalez Pires, but it wasn't checked by VAR for a potential penalty. But Mineiro were not deterred. In the 22nd minute, Lianco put in a long pass for Hulki, and paying homage to the superhero, he smashed Pesela, sending him to the floor and assisting Daverson, who dribbled past Armani and tapped the ball in to give Mineiro the lead. River tried to go on the offense and they almost get themselves a quick equalizer, but Colidios' shot was just wide. The second half was pretty uneventful, but Mineiro were still clearly the team on the driver's seat. And it showed when Gallardo made all five substitutions before Milito could even make one. But the changes didn't prevent what was to come. In the 69th minute, Mineiro would slowly start to build up from the back, and 18 passes later, Arana put in a great through ball for Daverson to make a run in behind, and with a fantastic first touch finish to the far post, he made it 2 0 for the home team. River were stunned, and only three minutes later, they were caught slipping on a throwing, leaving Daverson all alone inside the box where he was able to hold the ball and then pass it to the middle for Paulinho to score a third for Atletico Mineiro. And the worrying part was how toothless River looked in their attack, as they didn't create a single clear chance in this game. The game ended 3-0 and now River has a huge mountain to climb if they want to reach that grand final in Buenos Aires. Gallardo is known for his comebacks, but this team doesn't seem to have the firepower. I am going to predict River to win the second leg, but I'm just not sure if it's gonna be enough for them to advance. Botafogo received Peñarol in Rio de Janeiro for a highly anticipated match between a five-time champion and a team which is only making their third semi-finals appearance. But if I told you which was which after seeing the result, you wouldn't believe me. <laughs> the first half was pretty dull, but if anything it was Peñarol the one who started off better. Botafogo looked nervous playing out from the back and in the 24th minute, Perez forced John Victor to make a great save. It wasn't until the end of the first half that Aguirre actually had to make a save himself. In a shot from distance by Luis Enrique, who recently got a winner for Brazil against Chile in the World Cup qualifiers. The underwhelming first half made what was to come even more shocking. The Botafogo that came out to play in the second half was not the same team and from the get-go they put the pressure on Peñarol, who by this point were basically playing with a back six trying their best to keep El Fogao at bay. But it was all for nothing. In the 50th minute Luis Enrique cut Peñarol in half with a great pass after spotting Savarino making a run. And the Venezuelan did not waste the opportunity tapping the ball around Aguirre to give Botafogo the lead. And sadly, if you're a Peñarol fan, 
It was only getting started. Only five minutes later, Savarino put in a cross that was headed down by Alex Teles, and among dozens of legs, it was Alexander Barbosa the one to find it and slot it in to get a second. And only three minutes after that, with Peñarol scrambling to try and get their things together, Vitinho made a run on the right and slid in a pass for Savarino to appear yet again. With his shot finding a weak response from Aguirre, and after 10 minutes, Botafogo were 3-0 up. Nothing seemed to be working for Peñarol. As shocked as they were, they couldn't create a single chance to try and respond. And instead, they were giving the ball away, which allowed Botafogo to hit in transition, like they did in the 74th minute, when Almada progressed the ball forwards for Igor Jesus to assist Luis Enrique, who masterfully chipped it over Aguirre and made it 4 and in the 79th minute the final nail in the coffin. With someone injured inside the pitch, the ref didn't blow his whistle and Botafogo again went on the offense. It was Igor Jesus making a run and passing it to Almada, who with a shot forced Aguirre to make a save, but the rebound was headed in by Jesus to make it 5-0 to Botafogo. But the result wasn't as bad as what the CM for Peñarol decided to post after the game. Like, come on man, what are you doing? Game, set, and match. Listen, I know they are called Bottle Fogo, but it would truly be spectacular if they managed to toss this one away. I do think that Peñarol is gonna win just because Botafogo are gonna try to make it difficult for themselves, but in the end, it's gonna be the team from Rio de Janeiro to advance to the final. And this is how my predictions are going. Another perfectly balanced week, as I correctly predicted Botafogo to win, but the River did not get the draw in Brazil that I called. Bringing the total score to 69, nice, correct predictions, and 51, incorrect. Only three more games to go, so let's see if I can take my score to 70 and beyond. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. Remember to like, comment your predictions down below, and subscribe to not miss out on any more Copa Libertadores content. I'll be seeing you all next time.